Hey, it's Jared Padalecki. Right now, I'm shooting a fresh episode of Supernatural that you can see this Tuesday on the WB. Tonight on the WGN News, heartache for Bears fans after coming so far and being so close, this year's dream ended tonight at Soldier Field. You're going to have to be more careful where you smoke tomorrow. A new law could make a quick trip to the drugstore take a lot longer. Plus, police use a taser to subdue a naked man running around the L. And there is snow in Jim Ramsey's forecast, but temperatures are still above what they should be for this time of year. It's 9 o'clock. The WGN News starts right now. This is Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. Scream as they might, Chicago fans just couldn't push the Bears over the line and into a win. Another hopeful season comes to an end in the jaws of the Carolina Panthers. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jackie Bang. And I'm on Carlos Van Hool. The big story, of course, tonight is the Bears. WGN Sports Director Dan Rohn joins us more with uh, more in tonight's disappointing game. Disappointing is yeah. right, although a terrific season. Nobody can take that away from those guys, but uh, it didn't end up quite the way they'd hoped it would. In fact, it took the Panthers only a couple of plays to show everybody they were not going to be pushed around like they were the first time they'd come to Soldier Field. For most of the game today, Carolina was doing the shoving, and they wind up shoveling dirt on the Bears' hopes of a Super Bowl. One of those throwaway stats, 82% of the teams that get a first week bye come back to win that first game. A true throwaway number. Second play of the game, Jake DeLome going for Steve Smith. Couldn't have been more open if he'd sneaked in from the stands. A 58-yard play. Smith tortured the Bears secondary, and yet they rallied. Down 13-0, twice getting it back to a two-point game. Rex Grossman to Desmond Clark for this touchdown. Then 29-21 in the final minute, Bears trying to get it tied up. But on fourth down, Grossman's pass in the flat sailed over Musin Muhammad's head. And with it go the Super Bowl dreams of this team and this city. The Carolina Panthers moving on to the NFC title game in Seattle next week, 29-21 over the Bears. Rich King was at Soldier Field for the uh, game this afternoon. Standing by out there now, I guess they're about to turn the lights on uh, off on you, Rich, and probably on the season as well, I guess, huh? That's right, Dan. Tough game for the Bears. Remember the old Lloyd Bridges movie, Airplane? He picked a bad week to stop smoking. The Bears picked a bad week to stop playing good defense. Worst defensive game of the year in a meaningful game. The Vikings game, they gave up 30, uh, 34 points. That was meaningless. All the defensive stars didn't play that game. But the 29 points, of course, by Carolina, unusual for the Bears' defense. And after the game, Lovey Smith simply said, well, the Bears were outplayed. There's not a lot of excuses we can give you, except uh, they played better than we did today. But again, we're going to use this as, a, you know, use this game as a as a time for us to be alone and try to learn from as we go into next year. We lost as a team. You know, they scored 29 points. We got to score 30. Uh, that's just the way it goes. Um, we 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 didn't do enough to win today. Well, Dan, the Bears also got bummed up in this game pretty good. A lot of guys injured. Mike Brown, the key loss early in the game, celebrating a stop on the goal line. He hurt his calf again. And he got to take, give, give credit to uh, Carolina. Steve Smith, 12 catches. And after the game, some interesting comments from Steve Smith. We were there on the field when he came off. We'll have that for you coming up in this replay. Talking about that trash talk all week long. And Steve Smith gave it back to the Bears just a little bit. More coming up during this in replay. Well, they say talk is cheap. It's what you do on the field that counts. And he had an enormous game against the Bears out there today. Rich, we'll see you at 940 on instant replay. You know, I didn't think right. the trash talking guys was all that bad this week, to tell you the truth. I thought it was pretty much the norm for a game like this. But uh, some people tried to blow it up. All that stuff doesn't make all that much difference once they get on the field. It's who plays the best that makes the difference. And today was Carolina. Right? Yeah, we just assumed we would beat Carolina and the big battle would be Seattle. Well, I will say this. That Bears defense is going to be eating some humble pie in the offseason. Because yeah. they had talked a pretty good game and really didn't deliver today against Carolina. All right. But much more an instant replay as far as the football end of it goes. Okay. okay. We'll see you later on. Thank you. Well, some Bears fans shelled out hundreds of dollars to watch today's playoff game in person. So you better believe they arrived early for the festivities. WGN's Fred Shropshire is live from Soldier Field with a look at some of the happier pregame fans. Hey, that's right. Talk about mood swings. The Bears showed up early this morning, happy as can be singing literally the Bears praises, but by the end of the game, they were literally singing the blues, the tune ending on a sour note. Bears, 
singing fans bearing down and bundled up set the stage before the big game. You got yourself a hot Italian. Brats, yeah. drinks, bean bags, flying flags, and even unicycles. Among the confident who want this playoff game to be more bearable than the last. It's the last time it was the Eagles, and I'm expecting a better show out from the Bears than they did against the Eagles. We've got the Super Bowl shuffle on cue over there. Don't you worry. We're getting ready to do it again. These folks squat in style with a little bear bust they call third and short equipped with everything they need for an occasion like this. We, we got everything. We got a, we got satellite TV, we got a stereo system, it's got a bathroom on board. In the middle of bear country, this paltry number of Panthers fans. We're about six Panther fans on the 16,000 tailgating Chicago fans, so I just wish everybody... <laughs> Oh, that wasn't very nice. We just wish everybody happiness better started already. Nothing hypes the mood like some trash talk. That's what's going to happen today. And a little bragging to add flavor. Leave it up to Grossman. The man throws the ball like a rocket, and I think he's going to tear him apart. And the defense is going to keep the other team from scoring. Actually, Grossman and the offense put up a strong effort. But home fans tonight were let down by an uncharacteristic Bears defense that allowed the Panthers to score 29 points. I don't think the defense showed up today, unfortunately. You know, if you would have told me before the game that uh, scoring 21 points, I said the Bears are going to win. It was a great ride, but we were hoping for more. I've been a season ticket holder for years, but I still love them. I'll still come here. I'll still support them. And that is what being a true Bears fan is all about, unconditional love. Most of the fans are optimistic about next year's team because the players will be returning, and now they have playoff experience. Live from Soldier Field tonight, Fred Shropshire, WGN News. All right, Fred, thanks. Bears fans all over Chicagoland took time out for today's game. Yeah, WGN's Chuck Coppola was out among them at Ditka's, and he joins us live now with more on this. Chuck? You could go just about anywhere in Chicago and find a big crowd of people watching the game. Bruin View up in Lakeview even put the big game on its big movie screen. But visions of the 85 Super Bowl champion Bears and what might have been this year were perhaps greatest of all at the restaurant owned by the coach. At Ditka's restaurant, they soon realized it was not to be. I'm just very disappointed, very disappointed. I've watched him all year long. I haven't missed a game. I made my reservations here three weeks ago. Diehard Bears fan, but our defense failed us. Just before halftime, it seemed promising as the Bears scored, but Carolina answered with another score of its own. It wasn't a great half at all. The defense played like garbage. I think Carolina's going to pull it out today. Yeah, but you got a couple of the Bears behind you here. Yeah, I know. I bought them the sweatshirt still. We haven't gotten any respect all year. The experts always count us out of it, so uh, I think we're going to turn it around second half. Well, by now, we all know what happened. Still, these are not fair weather fans. I moved here to Chicago from St. Louis two years ago, and I was an avid St. Louis Rams fan. I am now a Bears fan, have my dad visiting from Chicago, and he is a Bears fan. Come on! They know their cigars. This is an acid Kuba Kuba. Great cigar. And all the words to the Bears fight song. And though they came close in the second half, it just wasn't enough and ended what had been a very challenging year. We were struggling at first with the quarterback situation with the offense, but our defense picked it all up, you know, with the front four. Um, Ariwale Gunglie, we got Tommy Harris, um, and uh, Alex Brown. But um, I don't know, I guess they just, they just had bad luck today. Fans still may give Carolina credit. The Panthers scored against what had been a very tough defensive unit all year. Live outside Ditka's, I'm Chuck Coppola, WGN News. Yeah, big disappointment. All right, thank you, Chuck. Well, if you want to take a look back, the Chicago Tribune has set up a multimedia website with lots of information about this past season. The address is chicagotribune.com slash bears. Coming up on WGN News at 9, there are some things you need to know before you take a smoke break tomorrow. On what would have been Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, his widow makes a surprise public appearance. And if you think Italian beef would make a good appetizer, a new restaurant might be just your taste. Mm. And I'm Jim Ramsey in the Weather Center. Today's high temperature, 16 degrees above the normal for this date.
But by the end of the coming week, we expect to return to winter. We'll have the full forecast still ahead. You're watching WGN News at 9 with Jackie Bang, Bob Jordan, Jim Ramsey, and Dan Rohn. This is Chicago's very own WGN News at 9.